Volkswagen Polo Super Mini model line is one of the most successful in Super Mini history. This improved version of the Mark VI design is more advanced than before and comes with a smarter, more upmarket look. Features like a digital instrument panel and a whole raft of camera-driven safety and autonomous driving kit also borrow much from the class above. Ultimately though, this Polo is still the carefully conservative choice it's always been. Low-key, but likeable. When it comes to small cars in today's automotive world, the focus these days seems to be almost entirely on electric vehicles and SUVs, which ignores the reality that the market's best sellers continue to be resolutely conventional. And here's one of them, the updated version of Volkswagen's sixth generation Polo Super Mini. This model's sales significance remains huge for the Wolfsburg maker, given that it's the best-selling model for the brand in the UK, and almost 10% of all the cars the company has ever made have been Polos. This AWBZ series design first arrived here in 2017, successor to a model line whose roots date all the way back to 1975, and a first-generation model that had previously begun life, badged as an Audi A50. Since then, 18 million Polos have found satisfied owners, nearly 1.6 million of those in the UK. This Mark VI version reinterpreted Volkswagen's small hatch formula for an entirely new generation, bringing golf-style sophistication to the Super Mini segment. But in the years since it first arrived, what sophistication means in a car like this has been redefined. Did we ever think back in 2017 that just half a decade further on, Super Minis would need to have semi-autonomous driving features and digital dials? Yet, that's just where we are, hence the need for this facelifted Polo to follow these trends. By the time the next generation model arrives in just a few years' time, even more will be expected in this segment, primarily in terms of engine electrification, which perhaps surprisingly, Volkswagen hasn't bothered to include here. What has been borrowed from the more recent incarnation of the larger Golf is some extra technology, not only the digital dash, but also intelligent IQ light LED headlamps and the latest vehicle app convenience. And it's all been blended with traditional Polo virtues like a supple ride, decent rear seat space, solid build quality and a larger than average boot. But more recently arrived designs in this segment offer much of that too, including Super Minis from Skoda, Seat and Audi that share all of this Polo's engineering. So has this Volkswagen done enough here? You're going to need the industry's most comprehensive road test review the car and driving road test to find out. Almost every car has its unique selling points. With this Polo, these lie in quality and comfort. Delightful damping having long been a traditional attribute in a Volkswagen Super Mini. Even the crudely platformed pre-2018 era Mark V Polo model managed to cruise over potholes and tarmac tears quite adroitly, so it was no surprise to find this successive sixth generation version blessed with a class-leadingly supple standard of ride. That was down to the much stiffer and more sophisticated MQB A0 underpinnings that all VW Group Super Minis now use, and with this in place, we told you back in 2018 that this Mark VI Polo shrugged off pockmarked urban surfaces like a much larger car. It still does, of course, in this facelifted form. Nothing at all has changed mechanically as part of this update. Indeed, far from adding to the proposition here, Volkswagen's taken quite a lot away. Gone is the diesel engine option that it turned out few wanted. Gone too is the 1.5 litre four-cylinder TSI 150 PS unit that offered a stepping stone to the flagship GTI variant. And the base normally aspirated one litre MPI power plant originally offered in feeble 65 and 75 PS guises 
is now available only in a single ATPS form at the very foot of the range. None of this matters very much because almost all Polo folk continue to want the three cylinder, one litre TSI turbo petrol unit that the lineup is now almost entirely based around. The overriding focus is on the 95 PS version of this unit that we're trying here, offered either with five speed manual transmission or a seven speed DSG auto box. Opt for the auto, and if you're happy with top spec trim, you'll also be offered the alternative of an uprated 110 PS version of this engine. Whichever one litre TSI unit you choose, you'll find it a pleasantly fizzy little lump that has a bit of a thrum when you rev it. You get 175 newton metres of torque, that's nearly twice the pulling power that the base normally aspirated 80 PS MPI unit can muster, which makes a huge difference to the mid-range pulling power you'll need when overtaking. The quoted performance figures see a 1 litre TSI 95 PS model like this one manage 62 miles an hour in 10.8 seconds on the way to 116 miles an hour. That's nearly 5 seconds and 10 miles an hour better than the base MPI model. Unfortunately though, what this TSI Polo does share with that feeble base MPI version is an old school 5 speed manual gearbox, which doesn't help refinement on highway trips. Overall though, the need to stretch from MPI to TSI power in a Polo is a bit of a no-brainer. We'd be less inclined to find the extra to stretch to the 110 PS version of this TSI unit though, because the performance stats are improved only very marginally to 10.4 seconds and 121 miles an hour. If you need a bit more convincing to justify the extra £1,000 price premium needed to progress from the base 80 PS MPI version to this 95 PS TSI variant, then Volkswagen provides it in this facelifted Polo by including its latest semi-autonomous drive tech as standard fit on all TSI models. That's still a rare thing to find in a Super Mini and primarily here this means inclusion of the company's IQ Drive Travel Assist system, as seen on the brand's larger models. It's a setup capable of taking over the steering, braking and acceleration of this car at speeds starting from 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox, or zero miles an hour if you've specified the DSG Auto. The Travel Assist set up then working in either case right up to the car's maximum speed. That's providing the driver keeps their hands on the new capacitive steering wheel, which includes this travel assist button to activate the system. To achieve its supporting role, the travel assist system relies on two key features, lane assist for lateral guidance and adaptive cruise control for longitudinal guidance. So Volkswagen has had to include these as standard too. The adaptive cruise control system incorporates the brand's predictive ACC tech, which uses the signals from the front-facing camera, as well as relevant GPS and map data to slow or speed the car. If your Polo has sat-nav and DSG auto transmission fitted, the predictive ACC setup's even cleverer, working together with the gearbox and the navigation system to proactively take into account local speed limit information, town boundary signs, junctions and roundabouts. Enough with drive tech and engines, what else do you need to know here? Well, we mentioned ride quality earlier. Certainly, many competitors' brands are going to want to know how a straightforward McPherson strut front and torsion beam rear setup can deliver damping this good. It handles higher speed undulations brilliantly too. One writer described the response as being akin to riding on jeweled bearings. Even larger wheel sizes don't seem to upset it much. Inevitably though, you can't have everything. And in this case, what you can't have is the kind of eager, chuckable feel that you'd get in a rival Ford Fiesta or even in the kind of fifth generation Seat Ibiza Super Mini that shares most of this Polo's engineering. 
partly that's because the light steering doesn't deliver a huge amount in terms of meaningful feedback, which is a pity because it's actually quite precise and comes into its own at urban speeds. Body movements aren't quite as agile as they are in an Ibiza either, though they're still very nicely controlled, no doubt aided by the stiff chassis. In addition, the wide tracks of this sixth generation model optimize front end grip, so the car turns in quite eagerly if you're hustling it through a series of twisty bends. An optional sports suspension pack builds on this, incorporating more dynamic suspension, an XDS differential lock for extra cornering traction, and driving profile selection, which gives you a selection of drive modes that alter throttle response and steering feel. Even without all of that fitted, you sense that somewhere in this Mark VI model's DNA, it's actually quite a dynamically capable car trying to get out beneath the engineering levels of cotton wool, apparently applied to differentiate it from its Seat counterpart. The shackles came off though when it came to developing the flagship 204 PS Polo GTI hot hatch version. Here you get a two litre four cylinder engine with more power, 204 PS, than its two class arch rivals, Ford's Fiesta ST and Hyundai's i20N. Unlike those two models, you can't have a manual gearbox, just a paddle shift version of the DSG Auto, but the performance figures are still very class competitive. 62 miles an hour from rest, occupying six and a half seconds en route to 149 miles an hour. And adaptive damping's optional. Most conventional polo folk, though, would fail to see the point of a variant capable of performance like that. This is, after all, a Super Mini primarily developed to lower the heartbeat rather than raise it. The stability of this car and the way it simply smooths away rough surfaces is the best thing about it, an attribute complemented by standards of refinement that are truly exemplary by Super Mini standards. As a result, if we had a three hour drive to do and a choice of small cars to do it in, these are probably the keys we pick up every time. Oh, and the seats are some of the most supportive we've tried in a small car at this price point, an important point for buyers in this segment. After all, it isn't only long distance journeys that can take up to two to three hours. In short, it's all very golf-like. If you're a loyal Volkswagen buyer, that'll be all you really want to hear. Volkswagen doesn't mess about too much with the fundamental aesthetics of its core models. Just as a Golf should always be recognisable as a Golf, so it is with the Polo. Yet within these constraints, it's also been necessary to move the design of this car forward. Take the emphasis with this sixth generation facelift technology. The visual expression of that here is with these more intricate LED headlights. Volkswagen wants this to be a more grown-up Polo. This Super Mini certainly grown in recent years. This AWBZ series design is over four meters long, which makes this Mark VI model about the same size as the fourth generation Golf that was sold by the brand until 2003. These days, it only comes in five door form with a profile defined by this three dimensional arrow shaped double crease known as the Tornado Line a swage line that features a lightly flared, more overt lower section that flows from the tail lights through the door handles to the front wheel arch. There's also this lower crease to give the flanks some shape, separating wheel arches, housing rims that start with these 15 inches, but can be up to 18 inches in size. This C-pillar with its integrated quarter light window is purposeful too, designed to reach forward and make the shaping a little more dynamic. From a straight on perspective, you'd probably guess this to be a family hatchback rather than a super mini. Smart fluted ridges on either side of the bonnet flow into this wide restyled front grille that can now feature an LED crossbar of the kind we're now familiar with from the Golf. 
We mentioned the new LED headlights earlier. Avoid this base trim level and you'll get them with the brand's IQ Light Matrix technology. So called because it uses a matrix of eight LEDs in each headlight module to illuminate different types of beam. This lower intake's been redesigned too, as have the LED fog lights that sit within it. Move to the rear and you'll find that this Polo has now become even more golf-like courtesy of reshaped LED tail light clusters now for the first time made up of two sections. The second segment now integrated into the centre of the tailgate. In their premium form, as fitted further up the range, these LED brake lights pulse when braking and feature dynamic swiping indicator signals. As usual, of course, what's more important is what you can't see, namely the stiff, light and sophisticated MQB A0 modular architecture platform this Mark VI model Polo sits upon. This is shared not only with other rival Volkswagen Group Super Minis, Seat's Ibiza, Skoda's Fabia and Audi's A1 Sportback, but also with two of Volkswagen's smaller SUVs, the T-Cross and the Tego. When all said and done, a lot of the aesthetic tricks are really targeted at making this car feel as much like its larger Golf stablemate as possible. And if you didn't know that already, then you'll certainly be made more aware of the fact once inside. It won't take long to spot the major change here, the new digitalised interior, an update which has even been extended down, at least to some extent, to this base spec life model. There's also a smarter capacitive steering wheel bearing the brand's latest logo and all the cabin's important controls with the exception of the climate features are now integrated into the dash panel's upper crossbar. This is now surrounded by classier trim. We've got lava stone black inserts here, but various other colour options feature further up the range. On the GTI, it even comes in an energetic shade of red. The soft touch dash top trimming that's missing on some of the brand's smaller SUVs is here present and correct, though sadly doesn't extend into the door cards. Still, along with smart switch gear and the reassuring solidity you get from almost everything you touch, it all helps to position this Polo a small but significant cut above nearly all its super mini sector rivals when it comes to the important showroom issue of perceived quality. We'd previously worried for Volkswagen on this point, given the news that this Polo is built not in Germany, but with cheaper labour at the company's Utenhag plant in South Africa. More sophisticated technology also helps in this regard, of course. We've already mentioned the digitalised interior. Well, specifically, the key change here comes with what you view through that restyled three-spoke wheel. Conventional analogue dials have now been banished from Polo production, and instead, at minimum, you get this digital cockpit 8-inch screen. Using this steering wheel view button, you can switch it between three different display layouts. The first two are circular, either a speedometer or a rev counter, in either case, with configurable information in the middle. Or you can view a wider range of info with a third screen display option which gives you configurable data panels either side of a digital speed readout. The left panel can show things like consumption, oil temperature and a compass, while the panel on the right can show trip computer functions, navigation instructions or your audio or phone preferences. As an option on this base life spec model, you might want to specify the larger 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro version of this screen that's fitted as standard further up the range. This makes much better use of the instrument binnacle's real estate space. Much less different is the infotainment display that sits in what Volkswagen calls this high-gloss black island in the centre of the fascia. This 8-inch glass-fronted screen is now branded ready to discover with this base life spec trim, referring to the fact that it can be retroactively upgraded to include built-in navigation via the online Volkswagen shop. Sat-nav is, of course, standard on the Discover Media navigation version of this screen fitted further up the range. And if you avoid this base trim level, it's also possible to have your Polo with a 9.2-inch Discover Pro version of this monitor. The MIB3 system now on offer here delivers access to streaming services like Apple Music. And as with the original version of this setup, there's the wireless integration of apps via Volkswagen's App Connect system for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Otherwise, the look, feel and functionality of the controls, the clearly designated instruments and the neat switch gear should all be pretty familiar to Polo people. As ever, it's easy to find a perfect driving position thanks to a height adjustable seat and plenty of reach and rake adjustability for the steering wheel. 
Unfortunately, lumbar support costs extra, though. As for in-cabin storage, well, not much is lacking. The door pockets and glove box are of a reasonable size, and there's a useful drawer beneath the front passenger seat. The usual storage area in front of the gear stick has twin overhead USB slots, though they're of the USB-C variety, so you'll probably need this unsightly converter lead. Next to the conventional handbrake, twin cup holders, a coin tray and a 12-volt socket are provided, with a deep, tall storage box just behind. There's a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor, and Volkswagen has remembered to include an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. Time to take a look in the back. Now, when we first tested the original version of this sixth generation design, we briefed you on the fact that a useful step forward in rear seat space had been made thanks to the 92mm wheelbase length increase enabled by this AWBZ series model's more sophisticated MQB A0 platform. Once inside, particularly impressive for a car of this class is the amount of shoulder room on offer. Though, as with rival Super Minis, that's not enough to make this bench in any way really suitable for the transport of three adults. This rather high centre transmission tunnel mitigates against that too. You may also find that this model's relatively high waistline and rather shallow rear window make this part of the cabin feel a little enclosed. These rear quarter lights help in letting in a bit of extra light, something you can dial up to the max by specifying the optional panoramic glass roof. Going for that, though, might slightly reduce the boxy levels of headroom on offer, which don't appear to have been much affected by this sixth generation model's 7mm reduction in overall height. There are deep door bins and seat back pockets too, and for this updated model, these useful twin USB-C ports have been added back here. You also get individual overhead reading lights and coat hooks on the B-pillars. And out back, well, it's mostly all good news. All models now feature this adjustable height floor that can be repositioned at a lower level if you've taller loads to carry. In terms of overall boot size, we're talking 351 litres, which is 40 litres larger than the trunk you get in a rival Ford Fiesta. Despite the fact that very laudably, Volkswagen used to be one of the few brands in the segment who fitted a proper underfloor-mounted spare wheel as standard, now you have to pay extra for it. Bear in mind, though, that you'll have to do without this key feature if you pay extra for the premium Beats audio system. The GTI model has a slightly smaller 305 litre boot area. It's a well-shaped space, efficiently square and unimpeded by wheel arch intrusion. Four body-coloured tie-down hooks feature, and there's bag hooks on both sides. You also get this little compartment in the left-hand corner for smaller items. This rear backrest can't be specified with any kind of ski hatch, but at least it now features a 60-40 split across the range. Once you push it forward, up to 1,121 litres of total capacity can be released, which is almost as much as you get from a Volkswagen Golf from the next class up. When we first encountered this sixth generation Polo back in 2018, it was priced from around £14,000. With this facelifted model at the time of this test in early 2022, the starting price was around £18,000. Quite a jump, with prices for mainstream variants ranging up to around £23,500 across three trim levels. Live spec, which is what we have here, is predicted to take over 75% of sales. Above that, there are style and R-line trim options. Whatever your choice, you're limited to this five-door body style. Yes, even on the top GTI hot hatch model, for which a budget of around £26,500 is required. The 1.5-litre TSI Evo 150 PS engine, which used to act as a stepping stone to the top GTI, has been deleted from the UK range, as has the 1.6-litre TDI diesel. The Lifespec Polo range kicks off with a normally aspirated 80 PS MPI engine, but most customers will want to find the £1,000 more necessary to get the fizzier 1-litre TSI turbocharged unit we have here, usually mated to a 5-speed manual gearbox with a 7-speed DSG Auto available for around £1,500 more. Mid-range style spec comes only in 95 PS 1-litre TSI manual form, 
With sportier R-Line trim as an alternative to that same unit with either gearbox, your dealer will offer you the 110 PS version of this engine from the old UP GTI, though with a Polo it can be had only with DSG Auto transmission. Talking of GTI models reminds us to tell you that, a touch disappointingly, for our market the Polo GTI only comes in auto form, but with paddle shifters, so you can make the most of that hot hatch variant potent 204 PS 2 litre TSI engine. Right, what about the value proposition on offer from a mainstream Polo model like this one? Well, in evaluating that, the obvious place to start is with the three other Volkswagen Group Super Minis that share all the same engineering as this one. Say it's Ibiza, Skoda's Fabia and Audi's A1 Sportback. You'd expect the Skoda and the Seat to be cheaper, and they are by around £1,000, and you'd expect the Audi to be more expensive, but actually it costs around the same as an equivalent Polo. What about the super mini segment market sales leaders, Vauxhall's Corsa and Ford Fiesta? Well, a Corsa 1.2 turbo will save you around £500 over a Polo 1 litre TSI 95 PS model. With an equivalent Fiesta 1 litre EcoBoost, the difference is more like £1,000. Looking at some other segment options, you could save just over £1,000 with a Mazda 2 and around £800 with a Mini 5-door. An equivalent Renault Clio would cost you about the same as a Polo. Bigger savings than that are available elsewhere. For example, should you be looking at the base 80 PS 1-litre Polo, the Citroen C3 and the Suzuki Swift can both be had with similar engines at savings of nearly £4,000. With an MG3, the saving would be over £5,000. But with big savings come big compromises in terms of technology and equipment, which you'll really feel with the three models just mentioned. It's also worth pointing out that some popular segment choices will actually cost you more than a Polo. The avant-garde Peugeot 208, for instance, is around £1,000 more. And of course, you'll pay more for the two full hybrid-only models in the segment, Honda's Jazz and Toyota's Yaris, which both cost from around £20,000. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Polo that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Volkswagen has been with the standard spec. You might be pleasantly surprised here. This facelifted model offers some significant customer gains in this department, specifically in the area of big car technology. That primarily means LED headlamps and taillights, an 8-inch digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen and quite a lot more camera safety kit. But the feature of Volkswagen's keenness to talk about is IQ Drive Travel Assist which comes with adaptive cruise control and is standard across the range, providing you avoid the entry-level ATPS engine. Travel Assist facilitates level two automated driving at speeds up to 130 miles an hour, and the system is capable of taking over the steering, braking, and acceleration of your Polo at speeds starting from naught miles an hour with a DSG auto gearbox or 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox and going up to the car's maximum speed. The driver activates the system by pressing a separate travel assist button on the redesigned multifunction steering wheel. Other standard life spec features include 15-inch Essex design alloy wheels, power folding, adjustable and heated door mirrors, automatic rain sensing wipers and double USB-C sockets front and rear. You also get air conditioning and a light and sight pack, which includes a coming and leaving home light function, rain sensing wipers and an auto dimming rear view mirror. You could also tick off heat insulating glass, a front passenger under seat drawer, rear electric windows, a variable height boot floor and a split folding rear seat. Infotainment's taken care of by a ready-to-discover media system with an 8-inch central touchscreen. From this, you access a six-speaker DAB audio setup and Volkswagen's wireless App Connect system, which allows use of the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto or MirrorLink systems that enable you to mirror the display of your smartphone onto the center dash monitor. 
move up to the mid-range style trim and you get Volkswagen's IQ lights, intelligent LED matrix headlights, which allow individual settings for different driving conditions and environments. Plus, front and rear parking sensors, 16-inch Palermo design alloy wheels, two-zone climate control, an upgraded 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro dashboard display and Discover Navigation. If you've more to spend, your dealer will point you to top R-Line spec, identifiable from the outside by 16-inch Valencia design alloy wheels and bespoke bumpers plus exhaust trim mimicking a trapezoidal quad tailpipe setup. Inside, the R-Line models feature a sporty black roof lining, stainless steel pedals and sports comfort seats for the driver and front passenger, with upholstery in Caroso Art Velour's microfleece. What about options for mainstream models? Well, bear in mind that many style and R-line features can be added into base live spec. Parking sensors, the wider 10.25-inch digital cockpit pro instrument screen, two-zone climate control and the navigation system, for instance. Across the range, there are a number of key extras you might want to look at. Here, for instance, we've got front fog lights, front seat lumbar support, front and rear carpet mats and a spare wheel. You might also want to add the optional park assist system that can automatically steer you into spaces. Other optional niceties include a rear view camera, keyless entry, a wireless smartphone charger, heated front seats, rear tinted glass and headlamp washers. And we'd be interested in the optional Beats sound system upgrade, which gives you a digital eight channel amplifier and a 300 watt total power output. If you're after a sporty feel for your polo, the Sports Suspension Pack incorporates more dynamic suspension, the XDS differential lock for extra cornering traction, and driving profile selection, which gives you a selection of drive modes that alter throttle response and steering feel. As for practicalities, well, we'd want to look at the usual mud flaps, carpet mats, and the range of roof racks and carriers for things like bicycles, skis and snowboards. Plus, you can add a roof box and a tow bar. For the luggage area, there's a choice of load liners, a boot tray, rear bumper protection film and a useful restraint net to keep smaller items from flying around. What about aesthetics? Well, unless you want your polo painted in the only no-cost colour, solid Ascot grey, then you'll need to pay Volkswagen Extra even appallingly if you simply want your car finished in solid white. It's more likely that you're going to want one of the metallic shades, which cost just over £600 more. A couple of new ones have been introduced to the range as part of this facelift. Vibrant Violet and the King's Red shade we have here. There are various 16 and 17 inch wheel options as well. We've left briefing you on the range-topping Polo GTI until last because it's almost positioned as a separate model rather than a variant that someone might trade up to from a lesser Polo. As you'd want, given the GTI's premium price tag, this flagship version builds on what's on offer with R-Line trim but has an altogether higher level of standard equipment. There are 17-inch Parker design alloy wheels, lowered sports suspension and an aggressive GTI styling pack with uniquely shaped front and rear bumpers and a black honeycomb front air intake. Inside, there are sports seats with a Jakara check pattern, a glossy dash panel finished in King's Red or Deep Iron and DSG paddles on the leather multifunction sports steering wheel. The GTI also gets an embellished light and sight pack featuring automatic headlight control. Optional extras for the top GTI include larger 18-inch Faro design wheels, Alcantara-style Art Velour's Microfleet upholstery and an upgraded Beats sound system with six speakers, subwoofer, 300-watt power output and an eight-channel amplifier. Whatever kind of polo flavour you ultimately decide upon, you'll benefit from Volkswagen's WeConnect Plus app which will allow you to interact with your car via your smartphone when you're away from it. You'll be able to do things like lock or unlock the doors, remotely activate the horn and indicators, get a vehicle status report, set the cabin ventilation so that the car is cool or warm when you reach it, and locate your polo if you've forgotten where you parked it. 
WeConnect Plus media services also deliver online access to a range of useful information, such as traffic reports, petrol station locations and parking spots. And if your Polo has sat-nav fitted, WeConnect Plus can allow you to integrate online traffic information into route guidance and transfer online points of interest to the navigation system. On to safety, an area where Volkswagen continues to keep this model well up to the highest class standard. Now, standard on all Polos is a front assist system that on the open road scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, warning you if one is detected and automatically braking if necessary. You get that same kind of functionality at urban speeds too as part of a city emergency braking system included as part of the front assist package. This setup also includes predictive pedestrian protection that specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you and, if necessary, can initiate braking to avoid them. All polos also now get lane assist, which alerts you if you drift out of lane. In addition, across the range, the Wolfsburg brand has installed a clever automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, say, someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. We also applaud the standard fitment of a driver alert system that monitors your reactions for drowsiness, prompting you to stop for a restorative coffee if lethargy is detected. Plus, it's worth mentioning that all polos fitted with navigation get traffic sign recognition, which pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the centre dash screen. The usual passive safety features are fitted as well, of course. There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre pressure monitoring system and anti-whiplash front head restraints. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC stability control and an ASR traction control system. There's ABS braking, of course, a hill hold, Assist feature stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. If you want more in terms of safety peace of mind, then there's the option of a driver's assistant pack, which packages in the auto parking park assist setup we mentioned earlier with two key safety features. The first of these is what Volkswagen now calls Lane Change System Side Assist, basically a blind spot monitor which alerts you if you're about to dangerously pull out to overtake when there's a car in your blind spot. The other safety feature in this pack is the brand's pre-crash preventative occupant protection system. This senses when an impact is imminent, then braces the car to better withstand it by instantly closing the windows. For the time being, Volkswagen has no really small EV that potential Polo people might compare to this car when it comes to calculations of overall running costs. That situation will shortly change. We'd expected that in the interim, Volkswagen might introduce its current ETSI mild hybrid technology into this design, but there's no sign of that, presumably because the vehicle architecture here wasn't originally developed to support it. And maybe also because ETSI tech would push the price of a Polo beyond what most likely customers would be prepared to pay. A price premium of that sort is one of the things that's put paid to diesel engine Polo motoring for the UK market. And for that matter, the TGI natural gas engine you can buy on the continent in this car. Fortunately, the one litre three cylinder petrol engine the range is now built around is a pretty frugal unit, even in its conventional form. You can have it in old school, normally aspirated MPI 80 PS guise, which gets you 51.4 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and 124 grams per kilometre of CO2. But as we've said elsewhere in this film, it's much better to stretch to the 95 PS turbocharged TSI 1 litre unit that we're trying here. 
not least because it's slightly more economic. The figures being 54.4 mpg and 118 grams per kilometer for a manual version of this Polo in life spec trim. It's 51.4 mpg and 125 grams per kilometer for an equivalent DSG automatic and 50.2 mpg and 128 grams per kilometer for the 110 PS version of this engine with the DSG Auto. For completion, we'll also give you the stats for the 2-litre TSI DSG Polo GTI hot hatch, 41.3 mpg and 155 grams per kilometer. The other cost-related facts surrounding this Volkswagen are pretty straightforward. You can expect some of the highest residuals available in the class and reasonable insurance groupings too. The base 80 PS 1 litre MPI petrol model is rated at an affordable Group 3E. Go for the 1 litre TSI unit in 95 PS form and that'll rise to Group 9E or Group 12E if you choose the 110 PS version of that unit. The 2 litre TSI GTI is rated at Group 23E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year. And with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Polo will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that in the first two years of ownership could see you traveling up to 20,000 miles or waiting up to 24 months before a garage visit. A single inspection service every year or 20,000 miles will be required thereafter, whichever comes sooner. And warranties? Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles, so we can't see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles, since that was what you get on its very mechanically similar Caddy model. Doing that, though, wouldn't give Volkswagen dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Polo, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this Super Mini is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. So where does all that leave us? Well, in one of those situations where plenty's changed, but nothing is really very different. This improved version of the sixth generation Polo is a useful step on from the original. The IQ headlights, the digital instruments, the travel assist system, and so on. But if you want one, the reasons why will probably be much as they've always been with this car. Namely, centering around this, it feels a quality cut above its rivals. Yes, what you get here might be little more than a shrunken golf, but then that's exactly what most buyers want. Indeed, you could choose one over that larger family hatch and really not lose out very much in terms of practicality, drive dynamics, or even the style statement you'll make on the high street. Ultimately, though, the typical polo person doesn't really buy this Volkswagen in order to make a fashion statement, which is why they will almost certainly end up with the kind of conservatively finished variants we've been trying here. That conservative mindset extends into the issue of drive dynamics too, so it probably won't matter that a handful of rivals feel more engaging than this one through the corners. Of greater importance to likely buyers is that few of these competitors will be more comfortable in day-to-day -day use. Quite a few of these alternative Super Minis will be cheaper to buy, of course, but once again, that may not matter greatly to many likely customers. They would want to pay over the odds, of course, but as long as the premium to own this Volkswagen is relatively slight, as in this case, they'd simply rather have a Polo. Use one for a few days and it soon becomes clear why that is. Opting for one of these suggests that you choose to drive a small car rather than necessarily needing to. It's a small but significant difference. Now, at the end of the day, there's much to be said for an extra touch of quality and class. Seek those as your priorities and you'll find 
this little super mini more than happy to oblige.